let me start off by saying it'll be 10 times easier if you go out and get an engine stand to do this because I'm gonna have to manhandle this engine which is not a very heavy engine but it would just be a lot easier with an engine stand so that's just a heads up All right, make sure the arrow is facing the timing belt. And you wanna carefully, you wanna get the uh, rod journal facing where this can slide over it. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the bearing on right now. That way it's all easy to get to. All right, now that the cylinders are lubed up with oil, you'll just wanna slide it in carefully and then tap the piston down now you can take it and pull it up where it needs to be and real quick I wanted to show you how easy it is to put the rod bearings in there's a little notch you find the notch with the notch then you press and that's that make sure there's no dirt in any of these and use the uh, torque settings that either the factory has if you have factory studs or the paper that came with the ARP which says 26 foot pounds make sure the orientation where the three they don't all have threes some have twos and ones and stuff like that make sure that is facing the back side and it matches up with the rod. All right, where the ring comes together, you want them to be staggered. See, there's this notch here. On the other side, we have it in the complete opposite spot. And you wanna do this in a cross shape, here, 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 and here. That way, oil doesn't get past it and your car smoke. So, just figured I'd show you that real quick. All right, we got it all together. It spins freely, it's feeling really good. Um, I'm gonna put the main cap back on, pick up tube, and uh, torque everything down and get the oil pan put back on. Also, I have a brand new oil pan gasket in case you were wondering. Alright, for the main caps, uh, bolts, 
You don't want to hit them with the impact and get them tight. You just want to kind of get them closer. Um, it's 18, one pass, then 38, and then 47 for the final. All right, now I'm gonna put the oil pickup tube on in the gasket and then re-put the oil pan on and we're done with the bottom end. At this point, make sure that your oil pan's clean because you don't want any metal or contamination clogging this up and lowering your oil pressure. All right, now that we got it together, flipped it over, got the oil pan all on, rotated the engine quite a few times, checked cylinder walls, everything's looking good. Now we're gonna put the multi-layer steel head gasket. This has a crush of 38 thousandths of an inch. It's more than enough between the pistons and valves. Typically at this point, people would clay the pistons where you basically put a small layer of clay or Play-Doh on the pistons assemble the engine, torque everything down, rotate it, pull the head back off, see where it needs, and you can make uh, relief cuts basically. Grind some down, uh, some excess material off the pistons, and then reassemble, check it again, make sure everything's good. I have never been accused of being a genius, so I'm not gonna do that route. I'm just gonna play it by eye and ear and field to see if it's touching the valve um, while rotating the engine, make sure timing's dead on. So we'll go ahead and get this assembled and uh, we'll see if it lives. All right, timing's dead on. I'm gonna have to take the crank pulley off just because when I go to put it in the car, uh, the crank pulley will actually be in the way I'll put the alternator and the crank pulley on while it's already in the car. I'll wait for the intake manifold as well because it makes it easier to connect everything. Um, I rotated the engine quite a few times by hand. It's pretty smooth. I don't feel any snags or spots where it's actually catching. Um, granted, when VTEC engages, the lobes open a little bit more or the valves open a little bit more. And when I put my race cam in, that's when everything's really going to have to have no room for error. The race cam will be much bigger, so I will have to clay the pistons at that point in time. But since it's a stock head, stock bottom end, well, not stock anymore, but pretty close to stock. The head's never been milled before, um, so it should help. But my compression will be right around 13 and a half to 1, uh, give or take a little bit. Um, if I milled the head and did a few other things, I could get the compression up higher, but that's 12 and a half to one's even pretty high. So this is gonna run really good. Of course, I don't have a tune for it yet, so it won't run near as good as it should, but uh, everything's brand new. So in theory, it should run pretty awesome. So now I'm gonna assemble the valve cover and get this thing ready to be put in. All right, I have comp cam, comp cam engine break-in oil additive. This stuff has extra zinc in it, which is really good. Um, so I, I like to pour a little bit on the cam itself before starting. Um, I recommend getting an engine brake in oil. It is very crucial. Um, of course, I'll add this whole thing to it once all the oil goes in. After a thousand miles, you change your oil out. Some people like to do it before then, but I'm going per instructions. Um, you don't take the engine over 4,000 RPMs on brake in. A lot of people like to differ and say that you do, but there are plenty of evidence and uh, the factory manufacturers even say not to do that within a certain amount of miles. Um, so go open an owner's manual for a Ferrari or even a Civic. If you still have an original one, it'll say when it's brand new not to go over 4,000 RPMs because it has to break in. This is totally normal. After it's broken, you can go as high as the engine will allow. 
So I figured I'd just give you that tip when installing this. I'm not a pro, but I do know some things. Um, as you can see, I did get the engine assembled. We're going to see if it runs, obviously, once I get uh, spark plugs in it, because there's no spark plugs. So yeah, I'm going to get this valve cover on now, and uh, we'll get to it. The engine's all good to go. All I've got to do is uh, get some spark plugs in it and mate this thing with the transmission and get everything bolted up and it's ready to fire. Um, I will put more oil in it. I didn't want to put too much. It started to leak out that side because of the slope. Like I said, if there's an engine stand, it'd be way easier. But a lot of people ask why I use SuperTech and say that it's junk oil. It does have one of the most additives um, out of all oil brands besides Mobile One and it has a ton of additives it's really safe oil and it's made by Walmart or the brand of Walmart because th that's why one reason I know it'll work is because Walmart actually doesn't want to get sued so they put as much oil additives as legally allowed um, it's good oil I've tried and true it it works awesome I've broken oil engines with it um, it's really cheap oil, so when I drain it out in a thousand, I'm not going to be like, oh, there's $30 oil. Also, another note, do not use full synthetic oil when assembling the engine or breaking the engine in. The rings need to seal. With synthetic, it won't seal. Um, there's a lot of information on the internet about this, as long as you go to the proper websites. Um, there's just a ton of information out there, guys. So just do your research before, ahead of time, but definitely use an engine break in oil. And everything should go smoothly and don't rev it high a lot of people say drive it how you're gonna break it in how you're gonna drive it and I've tried that and it does not work um, the way it works is the way that the factory manual say it's supposed to you're supposed to change it out of a thousand there's a lot of research that I've had to do on actual engine break-in to get a properly built engine this isn't my first and it's definitely not my last so stay tuned everybody I'm about to put it in <laughs> 